Hi everybody, it's Michelangelo Caruso. I'm here giving my, uh, well, my farewell as president of uh, Troy Rotary. It's been a fabulous year. It's been actually one of the best years of my life. And uh, although some other good things have happened for me this year, being president of your club, our club, has been a great honor and a privilege. Uh, we've, uh, we've done some great things this year, and although I didn't do any of them alone, I, I do want to uh, mention them today. I'm not taking credit for them, I'm just coordinating the announcements for you. Our President's Dinner, a year ago today, was the first President's Dinner in Troy Rotary history that actually raised money. It was a fundraiser for us. We had close to 100 people attend, and, um, and we have plans for keeping this as a revenue center in the future. Um, we also hosted a past president of Rotary International, Wolf Wilkinson, in June of last year. It was the first time in history that our club has hosted a sitting, uh, sorry, any kind of uh, president of, of, of Rotary International. Wolf is not a sitting president, but a past president. Uh, one of our members, Sam Abu Hamdan, has arranged for us to have uh, Wi-Fi at our club meeting every Wednesday so that we can show uh, YouTube flawlessly whenever <laughs> we need to. <laughs> Um, also, for the first time in history, our club uh, um, hosted or was part of a, a district governor, uh, ho I guess contributed a district governor to the district. Don Rydell was our uh, coach this year uh, at the district level, and um, this was the first time that's ever happened. I can't tell you, sir, what a pleasure it was working hand in glove with you, uh, knowing, of course, that Troy Rotary was getting a lot of extra attention because of you being uh, doing your great work for us this year. So thank you very much for all you did. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Of course, the headline uh, last year, and this is not nothing I take credit for. This is a Linda Weaver uh, uh, project, and uh, she's so fantastic bringing us this Viva Lavino wine tasting. It happened last year in September, and it brought us out of uh, financial doldrums. It financially resuscitated our great club. Uh, we grossed nearly forty thousand dollars. It was the first time in a decade we had seen. It was the first time in a decade we had seen that kind of money. And now that we know how to do it, we think we can not only replicate it year to year, but we're trying to double those numbers this year and wish us luck. Viva Lavino this year is September 21st, 2013. If you'd like tickets, you can go to uh, Viva, let's see, www.vivalavino Troy, Tom? VivaLavinoTroy.com. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, the 20th, September 20th. For the first time ever, uh, not ever, but in a long time, we finally have a local service committee. I think it was shameful that we did not have a local service committee uh, for the longest time. We, didn't, we couldn't staff a committee. There weren't enough people in the club. There wasn't enough interest in the club. And this year, although it's been merged with the international committee, we can now roll up our sleeves and do some good things in the community, which is one of our avenues of service. So we're very proud about that as well. Um, so on a... Uh, personal note, uh, it was a fantastic year for me. I, as you know, I'm very involved in the district uh, as a Rotarian. I'm involved in the zone or the region, and I'm also involved on the international level. Now, man, many of you know this, but I gave, uh, uh, geez, maybe 50 or 60 talks uh, in different capacities outside of this club's 52 meetings and 12 monthly board of directors meetings. In fact, I gave 21 talks for Rotary all over the North America, just this spring alone, it was my heaviest spring travel season ever. I have one story, uh, many stories to share with you. I'll share one in particular. I was, uh, I had a trip and I was coming from uh, Minneapolis uh, down to Chicago and then coming back home. And I had, happened to be driving on this particular trip. And as I left Minnesota and crossed into Wisconsin, uh, where there is nothing, I mean, there's just casinos, it, it's Indian country. And uh, the car broke down, my rental car broke down. And I called the Enterprise and they hooked me up, they took care of me with a car and uh, put me up in a hotel. No new car, but it put me up in a hotel. Um, and we couldn't get a car, a car fast enough. So I ended up renting a taxi to get from Northeast uh, Wisconsin to uh, Chicago, Illinois. I got it there an hour before my keynote speech and uh, my uh, employer was very pleased, very uh, impressed with my dedication. Um, the uh, number one question I've answered about this story is how much did the cab cost? $250 plus tip. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of uh, that's thing that I way. did. I want to share this with you uh, before we watch the video. Uh, this is one busy week during my presidency, and, and, and I'm telling you about this week for a particular reason. Linda will appreciate this perhaps more than anybody. 
Uh, on this particular Saturday and Sunday, the beginning of this week, I want to tell you about, I spoke at the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island for a Zone 2829 Institute. Uh, they, uh, it was not my favorite schedule for speaking. They gave me five 15-minute sessions, which means I had to prep five sessions. Um, and the trip to get there, if you, if you don't know Mackinac, is by car and by boat. So it was not the easiest place to get to. I drove home. Uh, it took me five hours to get home on Sunday, uh, where I brokered a deal with our wine vendor from last year. You remember we had some drama with that. And so that's how I spent the last part of that day on Sunday. On Monday, I flew to Minnesota and then to Missoula, um, Missouri, or sorry, Missoula, Montana, to speak to an accounting client. So I was teaching, the, you know, helping their accounting firm become uh, stronger and bring a new business. That was on Tuesday morning. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon, uh, this is the 18th of the month, I flew back to Minnie, then to Detroit, and arrived home after midnight. On Wednesday, I uh, came in to ring the bell at your Troy Rotary meeting and to host past President Wilf Wilkinson. Again, first time in history that's happened. I had a little time to myself on Thursday. On Friday, I spent prepping for the Viva Lavino event because this was the event of the biggest fundraiser, the week of the biggest fundraiser we ever did. That's what kind of week it was. And so on Friday, it was the day before the event, we had a lot of stuff going on. And then, uh, of course, uh, I emceed the event, my pleasure, I hope to do that forever. It's a fabulous event for us. We helped with set up and take down, and then on Saturday, I gave a keynote speech for the Davison Club in our district, and that was my Rotary Week, just that week. And so uh, I, I want to just tell you that, that, that all of this stuff, I tell you this stuff not because I want you to feel bad or feel, you know, uh, anything at all. I don't want you to feel anything. Except just to know what, what's going on and just know a little bit maybe about me because um, I'm not leaving this club as, after I'm done being president. In fact, I've taken ownership in this club in a way that I never had before. Allowing to hold the keys to the building, the keys to the place for the year has made me a better Rotarian. I have fallen in love with this organization all over again. And I am now a new stakeholder in Troy Rotary. And that, that ownership will not be revoked under any conditions. <laughs> Next year, the year after that, the year after that. I'm yours, baby. So the reason I ran down my schedule for you and a little bit of a snapshot behind my life, again, not so you feel sorry for me, but so I could read you a quote from George Bernard Shaw, the author, playwright, and philosopher. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time, and I, I live by it. I hope you do, too. The quote is, I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be your club president. Mr. O'Shaughnessy, will you stand up, sir? We had a, uh, a ceremony at the president's dinner where a very nice, ornate gavel was exchanged. I just have a crappy wooden one for you today. Such, such a deal. But you are going to be president of this great club next year, and I'm going to help you. All of us are going to help you, and we're going to do things again that this club has never done. And we believe in you, and you're going to be a great president. Yeah. With, you, with your help, it, it'll, it'll happen. A round of applause for Michael.